Welcome back to Monday Specials. Two things to address before we uh, open the phone lines. Now, the doctors' union is not being truthful, and I agree with the school of thought, which believes that they don't want to be supervised locally by the county government so they can continue absconding duty to operate their clinics. That is Marianne from Nairobi. What do you have to say to that? Um, I think what uh, everyone needs to know that we actually have one regulatory authority, Kenya Medical Board. It is responsible for deciding whether I am practicing right. But the governor yeah. is actually a manager of the facility. Therefore, if he has problems with me as a worker, that is irrespective of whether I am a doctor or not. Mm -hmm. But for me, I am in the facility as a clinician. Mm -hmm. And I'm there to perform clinical service. And in that respect, I only actually have one person to be answerable to, and that's medical board. Mm -hmm. Yes. You want the health bill, a law, mm -hmm. to be passed or by when? Um, we have a whole three years for devolution to take place. Yeah. What we are asking is what's the rush? Okay. So there is time to get it done right. But in the meantime, we're saying can we have our services retained at central government? All of them? The, the, the the, what yeah, has, what we are talking for ourselves, healthcare workers okay. as personnel. Right. Okay. The governors feel capable of handling the facilities. We will not argue Tell with Tell me that. about the law. Let's be specific. Tell me about yes. the law. Let's start, let's start with the issue of uh, the, the process of devolution itself. Yeah. Okay? We, it was not done right. There are specific steps that I've clearly outlined yeah, that how the, 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 the transfer of function was supposed to be done. And, and categorically, it actually states that when at the point at which the services are handed over, the necessary regulation should be in place. Which is not in place. Which is not in place. When do you want it in place? We want it in place before we are devolved. So if they choose to take six months, we are good with that. They choose to take two months, we are good You've with that. You said you can do it by February. The government has said that can be done by February. Let me clarify. It actually can be done in two weeks. Let me clarify. There's registration. As we say, the county government act. Yes. That is operational. Mm -hmm. And the ACU addresses some of the concerns which they are raising, Section 138. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This other law actually is to enhance what we have already. And we promised that we have a bill by end of February. I agree with what he says that the county is the same thing I am quoting, that it gives authority to the transitional authority to transfer function, right. but not without structure. Categorically. So are you okay, yes. with, are you okay with February? Is that... Okay it's not with? that timeline. Mm -hmm. For now, we want the law to work right first. Let me give you a good example. The other day, Parliament was in an uproar about the appointment of Mutudo because a Gazette notice was mm. given by the President and they said it's not constitutional. Yeah. What happened? The Gazette notice was withdrawn. In this case, there was devolution without structure. So, you so what is so difficult about withdrawing this Gazette notice and saying the one we for have two but, years mm -hmm. and four months left, can we do this right? Can That's that all we're asking for. Uh, Hussein, I think this um, you know, debate of should the functions have been transferred is now a tired debate to be asking. Uh, but um, let's, let's put a few things into perspective. The law does not really say that it has to be done after three years. It says it has to be done within, within three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. Then the question at that point that came up it, uh, around the debates that we're having in summit was whether there was actually a way, a scientific way of determining who has capacity and who's not capacity, who doesn't have capacity. And everyone here was inheriting a capacity. And uh, Nairobi was inheriting some capacity. Mm. Mandera was inheriting capacity. Wajia okay. was, mm. so was Kiambu and Yamira and the rest. And the question to governors then was, if you are told you don't have capacity, and the function won't be given to you, how do you improve it? I have done things that I don't believe could have been done in 10 years in Wajia County today and as far as healthcare is concerned. For the first time, our hospital is working 24-7. We have recruited 60 new members of staff. Okay. We have advertised for 218. I have given them a billion shillings, which is more than 20% of what I'm getting. Okay. Would those things have been done if this function was not transferred to me? And the constitution has to be interpreted in line with the objective. The objective was to improve services. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, you're asking for regulation. Yes. Currently, there's a court order mm -hmm. that uh, says the strike should be put to a halt. Yes. You're not following the law, are you? We have heard about it. We have not been served. Mm -hmm. Okay. A question for Dr. Nelly Bosiri now, coming from mm -hmm. Michael from Kambi. Michael, go ahead. Yes, Hussein. My question goes to Dr. Nelly. If uh, he voted for the Constitution and the devolution that was to come, 
Then what is the problem of uh, the... Um, if my director can hear me, we can barely hear what Michael is saying. Because I believe that uh, they voted for the Constitution. And now it is the time to implement the Constitution. Why are they, why are they worried about being taken to devolution? That's my question. Can you get anything? Michael, if yeah. you could just repeat that question, sorry, and try and be brief. We couldn't hear you. I'm asking, if they voted for the Constitution, why is it that they are complaining now when we are trying to implement the Constitution about the devolution? If you That's voted for the Constitution, why is it that you're complaining now? Um, okay, maybe a little bit of history. If you look at the faces that are actually trying to deal with the issue of devolution, we're actually fairly young people in the system. When the Constitution was being passed, I was in second year of medical school when we were discussing the bombers draft and all these things, okay? And if you look at the original bombers draft, it had a health service commission, which we have agitated for over and over and over again. And we made the mistakes that healthcare workers perennially made and said, this is an essential service. Everybody will understand the need of a health I mean, service commission. And it went to Naivasha, and when the teachers retained their teacher service commission, ours was removed from the constitution. So we come into this system and find this is what is in place. As I said, before the gentlemen here were in office, the year 2011, if you remember categorically when we went on strike, one of the demands was that we wanted a health, care, a health service commission in place before we went into elections and got the new constitution under which we had to live by. That would have actually been addressing a lot of these issues that we are grappling with today. Mm -hmm. That would, did not happen. It does not mean that if it did not happen then, that we stop agitating and say, let things go whichever way they choose to go. Mm. So we cannot say that at that point that we, we, we were going... Let me clarify one point. I think the first starting point is, are we devolving health or not? If you agree we are devolving health, yes. then you cannot talk about a health service commission, mm -hmm. because that negates the same issue about devolution. Because health service commission centralizes mm -hmm. the HR aspect mm -hmm. of of the uh, of health sector, okay. which is against the constitution. But also, the issue about the order or the court ruling, the union says they have not seen it. We went full length on Sunday to put that order in the newspapers, it's three newspapers. Okay, what Sunday. do you know constitutionally? For you to actually put a serving in the paper, you need to seek leave from court to actually give you authority to do that. We have not received such notice to say that this was going to be done. Okay, so right we still really don't have a basis to recognize that. Uh, Rafael Lieutenant from PK Clinical Officer with a question to the health government sector. Rafael, go ahead. Okay, I'm asking concerning the, the employment, they're saying they're hiring uh, health workers. Is it a permanent thing or just uh, a casual thing? Mm -hmm. I, think, I believe I think we're saying that's coming to the wrong people. So the that's the government. The government. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, again, to strengthen the evolution, we should have even said that uh, all the counties now are public, have got public service boards in place. So the workers that are being recruited are being recruited permanently by the public service boards. And uh, that was one of the preconditions for, for devolution, that uh, are you going to manage these people in the context of human resources? Mm -hmm. So the public service boards are actually in place in terms of managing issues that arise that relate to human resources. The specific question was about yeah, people you, you're, you're saying you will hire? Yes, permanently, because the public service co boards are already in place. Um, I'm I think a little concerned about that, yeah. if, if I may. Because uh, we have had some governors actually categorically state that my county needs only 200 health workers. And I'm sure the cabinet secretary will agree with me that even the health workers we have right now are totally insufficient. WHO recommendations, we are way off base in meeting that. Okay, so when we have governors who go out of their way to actually make such casual statements, then at the end of the day, it's not the health care worker who will suffer. It is the actual the public that voted you in that's actually going to be in problems. And that's why I say I admire the two governors who sit here, because where they're coming from, they're actually talking sense. But we know that that is a small percentage of them, because the rest of them are people we've been talking to in their offices. Some of them don't even think it is necessary to hear what we have to say. Uh, mm -hmm. Hussein, 
I think let's let's take this apart in a sense. There is a clear process in law for converting the seconded staff, the ones that we're inheriting from the national government, into county government staff, which is going through the public service board. And I think most counties would have necessity literally take everyone on board and probably recruit more because of the shortage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, for now, like in my case, the 60 were permanent because it was a, on the basis of a need assessment, actually a critical emergency need assessment that came from the CEC of Health. Uh, what is also happening now as a result of the strike yeah. is that a lot of governors are actually recruiting people through their county public service boards, even if it's on a temporary basis, just to get the healthcare system running. What we're going on? Mm. Just for the Ambo from uh, Homer Bay County. Just for, go ahead. Just for the Ambo from Homer Bay County. Go ahead, please. Okay, uh, good evening, Osen. Good evening. Okay, my question goes to the governors. Some of them are already busy advertising uh, our vacancies. The question I'm asking, like uh, doctors, when they graduate, all of them are absorbed by the government, and all of them uh, are, in the, are working for the government. If today they are sacked, where are these governors going to get the doctors? Another example is a clinical officer and anesthetist. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to get these clinical officers and anesthetists who are uh, providing these services to the, oh. Uh, oh. To the patients? If, if I got him right, I, I didn't quite hear. If I got him right, he was asking where we're going to get these people from. Uh, I think we'll advertise. Um, we know that counties like mine do not have um, adequate, um, you know, local, uh, you know, um, staff on those cadres, and we're opening it up to um, the entire country. And any Kenyan out there who meets oh. the basic licensing uh, can be employed anywhere. And uh, on a long-term basis, there are steps we are taking. Uh, I'm fast tracking the completion of my MTC so that um, you know, in a couple of years, at least, I have a local pool of people that uh, are in the pipeline. Yeah. Uh, do we have another call? No, Chef. Uh, currently, you have said the governor has said, if these people don't resume uh, work. You're going to get the doctors. <laughs> uh, how does that sit with you, governors, and even you, doctors, with your conscience, knowing that at the end of the day, it is the monarchy who's suffering. We've seen many of them suffering in these hospitals. There are actually reports of many who have died because, lack of, because they have not been attended to. Now, both of you are pulling in different directions. How does this sit with the monarchy? As we sit right now, we want to go back to work. But we're just requesting that I don't understand why we have politicized healthcare so much. Okay? This is very basic. I don't think what we're asking for is too much to say that let the process of devolution go the way it should. That let us do it as we put structures in place appropriately. I don't think that we're asking for too much. George from Nyeri has a question for you. George, go ahead, please. Okay, okay we'll come back. We'll come back to George in a short while. Uh, your uh, uh, I think uh, my Sorry, let me, let me give... Uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much. Uh, basically, what, what one would say, when we were at uh, Kenya School of Government with their representatives, they were asking for three things. One, that the salary continues being paid by, by the national government. Mm -hmm. And we accepted up to February, up to the time mm -hmm. that he has got yeah. uh, his, uh, his bills in place. The second <coughs> thing they were talking about is their security of tenure, and both the vertical and horizontal movement of staff. That is with, uh, be between counties and uh, with national government and from national government to county and from county to national government. And we did agree that uh, that, that is what we all want and that that would be anchored in the public service bill, which the chair of the public service commission actually indicated mm -hmm. will be finalized by December mm -hmm. of this year. They were going to work overtime. So the other thing that they asked for was the public service with the uh, health service commission, which we did indicate was, and they, they did agree that it is uh, actually unconstitutional, because we have already. I beg to I, I, I'll come to that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not final. Let, 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 me, time, let me finish very quickly. Time, yeah. So basically, what we did agree with them is that all these things that they were requesting, we had answered them. The, what I'm trying to say finally is that what they have right now is is the industrial action that they have 
it's not an industry action in the sense of salary or terms and conditions. It is a, it's a strike on, on the constitution, which is completely beyond us. First and foremost, there's nothing unconstitutional about a health service commission. I think we need to be clear on that to Kenyans. Just because it is not there currently in the constitution does not mean that there are no ways to introduce it. Okay? We know the hardest way to go is to go for a referendum. But let us go back to the basics. Is there a way you we can have, We have actually talked about this before, yeah. even before we, mm. where we are today, previously, mm. that we said we don't really mm. care what you mm. want to call it. Okay. We just want a body Nyaberi, that Nyaberi, governs okay, our we'll go on with that. Nyaberi from Riruta, a question to the cabinet secretary. Nyaberi, please go ahead. Yes, uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my question uh, uh, goes to the cabinet secretary. From the existing law, and going by what the doctor is talking about, how sure are we that the money that will come from the central government to the, to the counties, uh, now that we see a lot of problems with the county representatives, that that money cannot be diverted from the use towards the medical, and then it goes to other, 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 other votes of the county budget. Did you get yeah, well, I somehow got it. I, I think he's talking about the governance issues. Mm. If we send money to the counties, yeah, how sure they are you, diverted? Yeah. What mechanisms in place, and how sure you it won't be diverted? Yeah, by the I government? think there's a lot of instruments which do, which, which actually control this uh, aspect of financial management. First of all, I think the control of budget, you know, has clearly indicated that uh, if money is sent to the counties and is not applied, we should, you know, there'll be certain if you like uh, repercussions. And then secondly, even the audit uh, system, I think, is not different from uh, national government. Mm. So it's not different from what you're doing now. You know, if, there's, if they divert money to buy vehicles and those kind of things, it will be reflected in audit reports which you come from the counties. So, so clearly, I think there should not be that fear at all. I think there is a bit of a concern, and I can understand what he's asking. Here are a few issues. Sometimes it's not about diverting money for what it was intended, really. We have seen some of the county budgets, and some of the budgets that have been allocated to health are actually not even able to sustain the healthcare workers' payroll alone before you even think about running the facilities and buying drugs and all these things. Okay? So we have a classic example of a devolved facility that perennially has run into these problems, being Pumani Maternity Hospital. I worked there, and we have seen the issues that the local government has had in handling this facility. When it, it was the only facility in Kenya that was of that caliber that was devolved, and yet it was run by one of the richest county councils in this country, and it has permanently been a state of collapse. But I but think okay? you say the key and thing is to be sure there are mechanisms to mitigate that. I am sure these mechanisms, mechanisms even for this that. facility were always supposedly there in writing and they were not You're followed, for surety, which is exactly it? what people are asking for the surety that health care is not something you can joke around with because people will die. George from Nyeri is so back. if we're not yeah. doing it right now. Okay. George from Nyeri, George, please go ahead. Okay. How are you, gentlemen and the lady? Good evening. Please go ahead. Uh, my question is going, uh, I want to ask the doctors. There are two things that are coming to my mind. One is that the doctors are not being, uh, they are not being clean with us. I think they are being hypocritical. First and foremost, we know that the doctors don't want supervision from the local authorities or from the governor. Because they run their own clinics, they're only in the hospital for only maybe two or one hour in a day. And we can give a case even in our local hospital here in Yeri, whereby all the doctors are consultants running clinics. Okay, George, you've made your point. The mm -hmm. second, the second so, was something. So that is one of the issues yeah. that uh, we are looking at. Yeah. The other issue is how can you bargain for a salary increment using human life? Do you have? Do doctors have a heart at all? Please answer to those issues. Even before we talk about the governors or the government, you should know that your calling is sacred. Please. George, thank you. Uh, talking yes. about your conscience there. I Asking very directly, do doctors have a heart at all? Um, I actually, um, I, I, I welcome that question and I want to make a few things clear. Number one, the law does not prohibit a doctor working in the public service from running a private facility. 
okay? As long as he has given his hours of service, you cannot hold this person accountable for not being there. What they do in their free time is what they do in their free time. Number two, those people they serve in, the, in, the, in their clinics do not come from across the borders. It is still the same populace within where they live. So wherever we are, we are still giving service. What I want you people to know is that, to be honest, if you were to pay a doctor for the services rendered, there's no poor person who will be able to afford to do that. Okay? Because we know that even the gentlemen sitting here, the insurance policies don't take them for treatment to those county facilities that we're talking about today. They're going to the private facilities and they'll be flying into Nairobi for treatment and going back home. Mm -hmm. Yet the people whose money they govern on how it runs health facilities are actually the ones using this service. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, instead of generalizing that doctors are actually running to their clinics, look at it this way. Okay. We have a choice. We can work in private sector, all of us. Yeah. But okay. someone has to serve the public. And that and is where the human heart comes in. We're doing that. Okay. But he's also asking another question of yes. the human heart. And if you have a heart at all that you're calling is to help the people, why should you go on strike? We How have, does that sit with your conscience? We have categorically that? always gone on strike for the people. Okay? If you look mm. at, if we've always brought in the issue of health care. What uh, governor here is talking about, Wajia County mm. has no facilities. Okay. Uh, I will governor, promise the, you, yeah. let me just tell him something, yeah. that governor, I will promise you today, you have the heart to advertise for specialists. But how many are going to come to a facility where they cannot even order for an ultrasound for the investigations? This person went to school to, to actually specialize, to come and be able to give service. But their hands are tied if they have no facility. Please hold, hold your answer yeah. just one minute. John from Eldred is the last caller tonight. John, go ahead and try and be brief, please. Uh, we don't have him. He'll be back later. Okay. He'll respond. Uh, I, I think the, the caller's um, question of where there's conscience here is all on our minds. The timing of this strike. Mm on the eve of the celebration of Kenya at 50, at a time when the president himself had intervened, brought all the stakeholders together, yeah. mm. provided a roadmap for sorting out this thing. And still they went on strike. And mm. still they went on strike. But you can't, you can't uh, solely blame them for that. You are also leaders. I and also you share part like of the blame, isn't it? If, if, I, may, we, we if I may just add to what he said, lots of we, we did, um, which they did not necessarily agree, agree with. I think, with. And we, I think we, just maybe to, to correct a little misconception here. The president called for a consultative forum. He gave two weeks to go and discuss the stakeholders and come back with a response. Nobody cares to consult until a day before I, I the, 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 the about, feedback. Uh, I don't okay? think that's right. That's not saying, right. I think the issue really? about uh, not having a heart was demonstrated by what they did the day after the strike. Kenyatta National Hospital is not part of the county's hospitals. Mm -hmm. Yet the union officials went to incite the postgraduate students. That's not true. At, at Kenyatta Hospital. That at, categorically, a meeting, sir, a big I meeting, have to correct you, it is meeting. not true. Yeah. I am a union leader. Mm -hmm. Nairobi is my branch. Mm -hmm. Kenyatta is my facility. I categorically told the postgraduate students, you cannot strike. So the meeting you had... Right now, they're not mm. happy with me because mm. I made that decision. So please, let's not... The meeting was called. Who had it of them? No, in, we've in not even had such a meeting categorically. Really? Okay. We have not had mm. such a meeting. Mm. Let us, let's but, be honest. But, but probably honest. What, what one can say uh, is that uh, if you look at the counties, take, for instance, uh, Kisi Hospital. It has been in operation for 93 years. It never had uh, a dialysis machine. Mm. Within the, within the last uh, four or five months, we put in, in place four dialysis machines. Sure. Uh, the ambulatory system was not working, it's working. Take Mandera. Mm -hmm. They had 52 facilities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which were not even one was operational. Right okay. now, they have 18 facilities that are operational. They have employed 200 staff. They had only 140 staff. They have uh, 18 facilities which are working, and they want to make sure that by by some time in the middle of next year, all the 52 facilities are working. Okay. Finally, because and of the country time has been independent for 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. Wambugu is asking, is there a limit, or will there be a limit, or is there any law that has a limit uh, of governors employing people from their own counties? Yes. Yes, there is. Uh, uh, there is a requirement of 30 percent of all the staff working in the county being outside of the uh, communities in that county. I think that's part of the national cohesion. And okay. um, of necessity, counties like mine that are on the periphery that don't have enough local staff would actually have a bigger percentage 
um, may be much higher than even the 30 percent. But on the issue of the machines and the ultrasounds, I think what we've done in these last six or seven months that we've been governors demonstrates that we have the will to actually equip these hospitals. You're speaking um, for Wajir? Or? Um, and I think a lot of the governors have done the mm. same. We will have those equipments. We are working with the national government on, mm. if need be, leasing them mm. so that every county has at least one hospital mm -hmm. that has all those CT scans, Finally. ultrasound, mm. dialysis machines, and all. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get your final comments now. As it is, we are all speaking, we are all talking. You're telling me your position. The doctors are uh, holding their position. It's seven days. Tomorrow, if this persists, we're going to eight days. Still, at the end of the day, one inch is suffering. Doctors are being blamed, but the leadership is also bound to be blamed because they are also on strike for a reason. What is going to be done? What is the solution? Well, first, they very are, briefly. Uh, thank you very much. First, mm -hmm. they are on strike on a matter that is beyond us, on, the, on a matter that involves the Constitution. If, if it was a matter that uh, was uh, an industrial action type of matter that related to their terms, it, one, one would quantify it. They are, they, 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 they are on strike on a matter that is completely beyond the people in this room. And it's on a matter that you can't put a time frame on. So uh, one would ask them, are they going to be on strike until Parliament actually passes that act okay. in the next six months? Okay. Um, for me, what I have to say is that you cannot politicize health. I've said it before. I will repeat it again. Number two, you cannot put the cart before the horse. So what is Structures it? Mm -hmm. first, then we, for the devolution will automatically follow. We are not against devolution. We are against haphazard and structured Evolution. What will it take for you to return to work? Number one, that as he has said, the people who are in a position to end this strike are not in this room. I am not even going to talk to the governors. These are CEOs of counties. The reason we have a constitution and we still maintain a parliament is because the parliamentarians are tasked with passing laws. So if we have a problem with the law, we actually have a group of people who can deal with it. I want them to step up and sort out this issue. So until that is done, you know, we have not seen any demonstration of wanting. Not to even the cabinet secretary. Our bare help. minimum. Let mm. that Gazette notice of August 6th be withdrawn. Is let that a us start this process appropriately. And if it is done appropriately, even in six months, we can actually have it done with structures in place. But no structures, we are really not bad. So you want that Gazette notice withdrawn? First of all, yeah. that was done incorrectly. Yeah. So on that basis alone, it should be withdrawn. And then maybe now you can... Cons uh, Not maybe. Data. We are committed to ensuring that once that Gazette notice to we are in a... Yes, we, we are going Is that to possible? You, I think we told them earlier that uh, we cannot gazette what has been gazetted. What you can do is discuss how we can put new structures and new legal notices in place going forward. And we did commit ourselves to do all that within a period of two months. I think what I can say, uh, Hussein, is that uh, let the doctors genuinely do a lot of reflection and decide why did they go on strike. And like has been said, if it's because of constitutional matters which are beyond anybody's control, let them see the suffering of Kenyans and go back to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, we, the yeah. court ruling has been made. I think to continue disobeying the court ruling, I think demonstrates there's a lot of bad will and they're not serious about what they're asking for. If they have complied with it, then mm -hmm. sit around the table and get, get some consensus. I'm going to cut in here. With all due respect, you're saying let them see the suffering of Kenyans. I will also throw a, mm. the same question back to you. Can you see the suffering of Kenyans? And what they are saying is this uh, dev uh, devolving the services is to be done within three years. Why can't you withdraw the Gazette notice so that it's done with regulations? But I think that's where we actually part company because indeed there have been consultations, there have been so, structures, yeah. there have been regulations. Mm. But Which they're not, they are still not comfortable with. So. Now, if they give the timelines we gave them, which, which was in January, we have the Public uh, Service Commission coming yeah. policy. By end of February, you have we come with bill. In, uh, to be tabled in Parliament. Yeah, to be submitted to Parliament. Can you assure them of what is going to happen in Parliament? That we can't. Exactly, which is the reason why we're saying let's not put mm. the cut before the horse. 
But they have a but it will not make a difference. What they're asking for is As I said before, gazette notices elsewhere. can be withdrawn. They I do not understand. Elsewhere. They can't even be sure that parliament will actually mm -hmm. pass the things they want to pass. I, I think and you, so that is why they're saying the gazette first. You can't, yes. pred you can't predicate what parliament Bottom line what is, what the gazette is possible. If, if it's not, sure. why, the, why, this has, why this total refusal to do the if, gazette? Because it's if, possible. But what has gone wrong to... to to bring the gazette, you know, the gazettement of the... If you're, not sure, yeah, if you're not, if you're not happy, sure how, what is going to happen mm. in Parliament, isn't she right or aren't they mm. right when they say, mm. then withdraw the gazette notice? But you see, the bill which we promised, which is within our control, yeah. we did commit to the timelines. And the timelines of the bill are irrelevant mm. if right now the healthcare worker, you know, let's start, let's start, we say the healthcare industry, isn't it? We are a service industry. You can have your wonderful machines, but if you don't have people to actually use those machines to keep mm. patients alive, you're wasting time. Bottom line, the healthcare worker must feel comfortable to work with you. Okay, the question, I'm, the getting, the question I'm getting, and I'm sure it's in many uh, Kenyans' mind, I'm getting from my directors, a very layman question, mm -hmm. then w you're addressing this to the wrong people. The other ones who are here, mm. we have talked to the Health Service Commission, mm. it is in agreement with us, but nobody wants to listen. But, uh, they have made their recommendation. Today let, you let, actually let had the ombudsman talking about it. Let me say something it. about the constitution. Yes. Once the function, the constitution mm -hmm. is very clear. Once the function has been devolved, it can never come back. It, the, the function can only go to the counties. The okay. ca it can't come yeah. back. Okay, let me give the government said, um, closing comments. Yeah. I think uh, there's a couple of things that we have to say straight. It's not the 47 you know, governors who passed the constitution. Oh. It's Kenyans who asked for this constitution and passed it. Uh, the issue of the timing of the transfer, as far as I'm concerned, has been settled. I do not believe that the rush, uh, using the doctor's word, mm. um, of, of the transfer of the functions has made the uh, you know, environment in which they operate any worse off than it was. If anything, it has actually improved a lot of things. And I don't think we can resolve a question of you know, uh, constitutionality through a strike that has been declared illegal by, by, by the courts. We are willing to talk. The issues they're raising are administrative. That the issues to do with transferability. Well, the issues spike, to do with trading. Spike. You know, we are willing to talk mm -hmm. and resolve these matters administratively. But doctors have to be intellectually honest. Okay. The issues of accountability here. Mm -hmm. Governors don't get nine months of unpaid leave. We've found, found very funny rotation arrangements in our counties in which Doctors are not on the ground for six okay. months, nine months. Okay. Let's all open up and be true okay, to the Constitution of the case. We have to wind up because of time. There's a court order, like you said. You're saying you still haven't, you still haven't been so served. May I ask you a question? Yeah. Have you ever seen a strike that has been declared legal? No. What does that tell you? But, you know, we're asking for no, those here. I'm just asking here. a simple question. She, she was asking if we for Parliament to legislate. If we cannot obey, because the court, mm. the court is the last recourse here. If we cannot obey the existing laws and the process of the court. Uh, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to but end this show in a very sad note that we still can't mm. find mm. a solution. Mm. But finally. Is that, is, um, should I end it like that? We still can't. You, you, would end it if, you would actually end it if you asked them why they are on mm. strike. <laughs> because there is no okay, let me give the last one to the Kalasin. Very quickly, I mean, uh, when they issued the strike notice, they actually put through two lines. One, they said hot devolution of the, of the health sector. It's not possible. Yeah, it's not constitutional. Secondly, they said about health service commission. It's not possible, it's not constitutional. So, going back to the basics of the notice itself, Hussein, it clearly means that uh, they brought a strike which was actually not anchored on, uh, on the requirements. Mm -hmm. okay, Do I get to respond to that? We are going to go, uh -huh. to go yes. back and forth. I know, back and forth, yeah. back and mm -hmm. forth. So thank you very much. I think I'm going to uh, mm -hmm. wind up the show here. We have some few tweets before I wind up. Uh, from uh, They've been tweeting using the hashtag Monday Special KE and on 22422. Let's read some of the tweets uh, right now. At Ekidor Ekitela, holistic and participatory process of all relevant parties should be done to come up with a formidable solution. At N. Gerald, they have no genuine reason to strike, that is the doctors. They, the fear of supervision coming close to them is what is making them do it. 
Uh, Stanley Chegg, of course, it should be that is the suspension of devolution of health workers' pay. How do you implement something where logistics are unclear? And at William Rianto 68, the health workers' pay should be devolved immediately. It's a constitutional act. County government should guarantee the terms of service. At Atonia Stanley 2, the pay should be devolved to ensure doctors attend to patients and not to their private clinics. And the last one, at B. Hu Jintao, uh, they are not justified. I don't know if that was the former Chinese president. They are not uh, justified to go on strike because so many people have succumbed to injuries. Work on negotiations. And now we are winding up. No solution still even in this uh, discussion. The, the least you can say, do we have any planned negotiations or meetings tomorrow? We had meetings on Sunday when we agreed everything. Tomorrow. Now we are not agreeing. Nobody's agreeing. Um, we have not been called to any meetings. Well, we made an offer it's for them to come back to us. No, we, we are have willing not to engage. Any such offer. Okay, then I sadly <laughs> have uh, to end Monday special uh, on that note tonight. Remember, even as all this going on, is going on rather, it's the Monanchi at the end of the day who is suffering. Thank you very much for watching Monday special and thank you for your responses on Twitter and on our SMS platform 2242. I'm Hussein Mohammed. Have a good night.